Good day. I'm John Bindernagel, and uh, I'd like to um, present this research video on the subject of, I'm calling it Sasquatch vocalizations. I guess it really should be described as purported Sasquatch vocalizations. And that's fine, but I, I, I just want to get this kind of this evidence uh, documented for, for the scrutiny of my scientific colleagues and for bioacoustics specialists to, to review. So, so, so let me begin with the location where these vocalizations were recorded. So here we are on the west coast of Canada. Uh, basically the area between Vancouver Island and the, the BC mainland. In particularly a section of northern Vancouver Island described here as a section where really Vancouver Island <coughs> and mainland BC are separated only by a Johnson Strait and Discovery Pass, which are not particularly wide. And so there is, there is as we know now, and has been, a, an exchange of uh, various mammals between the mainland and, and Vancouver Island, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about later. And in particular, <clears throat> I'm going to be talking on a vocalization on a small island, Cormorant Island, near the northern end of, of, this, of this area. Actually, the northern end of the Broughton Archipelago. And this island is Cormorant Island. Here it is shown um, on a Google Earth image with re respect to adjacent islands. And we'll come back to this maybe, oh, here it is, uh, enlarged. And <clears throat> there is always, not always, there has been complaints about suggesting Sasquatch vocalizations or the presence of a Sasquatch on an island such as Cormorant Island, which is basically dominated by a village which has an airstrip, which has grocery stores and roads. And we accept this, 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 uh, this basis for skepticism while at the same time pointing out that the western end of the island is relatively undeveloped, relatively natural, despite some logging, and that there are other parts of the island which are quite natural in, in terms of vegetation and forest. And, and, we, and we, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, uh, I will also address <clears throat> the proximity of Cormorant Island to Vancouver Island, the Pierce Islands, and Malcolm Island. So, okay, so in the fall of 2015, I need to play this. In the fall of 2015, there was a vocalization recorded by a young man, Mackenzie Mountain, on his cell phone as he sat on a deck in the evening. And we have his cell phone recording, which is a good start. I'm just going to play that again. Okay, so so that it was it was sufficiently unusual and sufficiently unloud that he felt it was worth recording, and that's very much to his credit. And it kind of alerted people, and, uh, and of course others, not of course, but others had also heard these vocalizations without recording them. So the following year, this, this, just this past year, the fall, September, October uh, 2016, other people heard them, at least two people recorded them, and what I have here is some recordings shared by a young woman living right on the edge of the, the forested area of the island, who was actually woken up by vocalizations and who recorded them on her cell phone over a period of maybe a week or 10 days. 
in the night, usually late in the night, after midnight, towards morning, and, and they're still faint, but I think we have them sufficiently amplified to hear them. Now, I, I'm going to pause, <clears throat> because the way I'm presenting them here is uh, as how those vocalizations have been interpreted by software to form what we call spectrograms. And a spectrogram, as you will see, as you can see, is a, is a it's, an, it's referred to as an acoustic signature. It's a graphic image of a vocalization showing the, the, the sort of the, the fundamental and then above it uh, overtones and giving some sense of how the frequency changes and the duration. And, and so we have this kind of a, this curve, which is really fairly consistent, but as you will see as we work our way through these vocalizations, some are louder, some are softer. So let's just play through this. There, there, there's a bit of road noise here, I mean, Although she's on the edge of the forest, there is a road in front of her, a street, and there is traffic. So we do, we have that, and I think at some point we have a little bit of house noise coming up. Okay, so that's, that's that. Um, now, that in itself is very interesting. It becomes more interesting because a collaborator, Rod Alfred, in Alert Bay said, you know, John, those, those vocalizations which we've been hearing here and which have been recorded do not stand in isolation. They've been recorded elsewhere in Sasquatch habitat and range elsewhere in North America. And he, he found some, some, some very good uh, <clears throat> examples of this on the internet from Norway House in northern Manitoba and brought them to our attention. So let's just have a look at, there's, there's Norway House um, at, at the northern end of Lake, Lake Winnipeg in kind of central Manitoba. And Norway House is, uh, here we are, is located in the boreal forest. And we won't go into it now, but there is the whole uh, aboriginal descriptions of Wendigo as well as non-Aboriginal reports of Sasquatches in the area. So now let's listen to what was recorded in Norway House, which is actually much louder. Uh, sorry, what, what I'm suggesting here is that it's much louder, but it's remarkably similar the, the acoustic signature is quite similar, and the, the, these also have been recorded in a house, so there are some human voices. Okay, okay, so that's worth listening to. Now, the problem with Norway House, unlike Alert Bay, Norway House being in the boreal forest is in moose habitat. And some people have suggested, oh, that's, that's a moose. Um, you know, people there know moose calls, they hunt moose. So let's just, let's just play some moose calls. Oh, 
Now I think most of us would agree that the moose calls are similar but not the same. And because we now have the advantage of uh, these acoustic signatures, spectrograms, which are much more meaningful to bioacoustic specialists than they are to people like me, we can actually differentiate between calls which are vocalization, which may sound similar, but which may be quite different in, in, in their characteristics. And the thing about moose calls is that the moose call has been very seriously studied by hunters who attempt to emulate it for, for, for their own purposes in, in hunting. Okay, now let's return to Cormorant Island on the BC coast. And uh, there's always a need to kind of defend uh, the evidence saying, because people are complaining, oh, there's a very small island, you know. Well, yeah, it's only four kilometers long, yes, yes. Now let me just play here a short video from the ferry. Here, here's the north end, the, the, the relatively forested end. No, well, the forested end. Here's the, the western end of the, the village. Behind the village, it's quite heavily forested, despite, you know, the development along the foreshore. There are places on the island with really good old growth forest. Um, let's look here. A very substantial wetland in the, in the middle of the island. And just, just to mention, uh, people, local people have been noticing <coughs> in the local news that two juvenile grizzly bears arrived on the island in the fall of 2016, were fo recorded, photo observed, recorded, and photographed, uh, had to be, well, had to be trapped. It was decided that they needed to be trapped and removed from the island. Um, so we'll just uh, continue with that little story, one more thing. So they were trapped and removed. And it, it was <clears throat> generally um, concluded by the wildlife authorities that they had arrived from the Pierce Islands, <clears throat> which are those islands to the east of uh, Cormorant Island, and are probably provide a corridor of connectivity to the mainland. So the point being, we shouldn't be looking at <clears throat> Cormorant Island as such an isolated piece of possible Sasquatch habitat, but more in terms of its larger uh, connectivity to Vancouver Island, other islands, and the adjacent mainland. So I think that's, <clears throat> as far as I can go with the evidence, our next job, of course, turns out to be even more difficult than, than the recording, getting good recordings of the vocalizations, and that is attracting the relative scientists, the bioacoustic specialists, wildlife professionals, mammalogists, to these vocalizations for an explanation, for comparison with, with known mammal, vocal, mammal and bird vocalizations, you know, birds, owls, loons, of course, mammals, oh gee, wolves, coyotes, bears, and to see if, if we are indeed talking about vocalizations which we can attribute to a mammal not yet cataloged, which we suggest could be the Sasquatch. Thank you very much.